This interpretive film and performance project has been produced by New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park. The program was funded by the National Park Service's Lower Mississippi Delta Initiative, an organization that strives to highlight culture and heritage in the Lower Mississippi Delta. Join us as we take a road trip to national parks in the Lower Mississippi Delta. Vicksburg itself is a very significant part of Civil War history. Uh, this is the turning point of the American Civil War. Up to July of 1863, the Union had been doing a pretty good job of losing the war. The significance and the importance to both the Union and the Confederacy of Vicksburg uh, was very apparent early on. At Vicksburg and at every other major Civil War battle, they had left 627,000 of their comrades behind, and they wanted to memorialize those soldiers who never came home from the war. They wanted to leave for posterity, their grandsons and great-grandsons, a very strong message that they never wanted any future American generation to go through what their generation had gone through, where the country turned on itself, brother against brother, with force of arms, killing 2% of the national population. Listen to the parrot shells, listen to the parrot shells, oh, the parrot shells are whistling through the air. Listen to the parrot shells, listen to the parrot shells, oh, the parrot shells are singing through the air. The feature song at Vicksburg is, which was at the siege of Vicksburg, it was written to the tune of Listen to the Mockingbird and featured our fiddler, Gina Forsythe. The song took the popular song of the day and had rewritten lyrics and the rewritten lyrics are suspected to have actually been written at or very shortly after the siege itself at Vicksburg. We're out in the actual battlefield now, out on the tour road. We're in Union lines. In fact, we're at Battery de Gaulier, one of General Ulysses S. Grant's uh, large massings of Union artillery. When you come visit the park today, a lot has changed. First of all, it's forested. The trees that you see around me, uh, and uh, as you will continue to see through the park, they were not here in 1863. Imagine a moonscape. Also today, it's peaceful and quiet. 148 years ago, these cannons uh, all around me would have been roaring just as fast as the men could load and fire at the Confederate lines across the way. Behind me, you see the Illinois Memorial. That's the largest monument in the park, and fittingly so, 37,000 troops from the state of Illinois fought here. One of the interesting things about the Illinois Monument is all the symbolry that's on it None of it represents war. It's all peace and reconciliation. There are 47 steps in the monument here. Well, there's one for each day of the 47-day siege. when uh, Matt came to me with the 2010 LMDI project, which is a music CD project. And uh, he showed me the liner notes and we were editing the liner notes for that CD project. 
and he said there were tons of stories that he came across that had not been told. You know, every day I'm here at this site and I see what amazing work they do, but uh, to have that opportunity to share that with people, to have uh, an opportunity to have that digital media was something that we did not have and something that was really important aspect of this project. And so it was uh, to go take the same project and go do that project in the parks that were involved in the original project. Very few American cities have the dubious distinction of having been laid siege to by the United States Army and the United States Navy simultaneously. And the experiences of the civilians that underwent that siege are fascinating in and of themselves. Imagine your, your, you and your city being caught in such a situation. It also gives us a chance to kind of demyth de and debunk some of the myths about the Civil War that everybody was either one side or the other. The Shirleys, the uh, family that lived here, were Northerners. They were Unionists. They were from Goffstown, New Hampshire. Uh, Mr. Shirley, James Shirley, was a lawyer here in uh, Vicksburg as well as a plantation owner. And even though they were Northerners and were Unionists, they were slaveholders. So there's an awful lot of gray in the Civil War, not the black and white that we've always been uh, traditionally taught was the case. With malice towards none, with charity for all, let us have peace. We're going to feature Gina on one more old time fiddle song. What are you going to play for us? One, uh, one from the 19th century called Golden Slippers. <laughs> 